What is up guys? My name is Vincent and in this video I'm going to be taking you all through how we can uh, get the Elasticsearch low-level PHP client running. And in this video I'm going to also be assuming that uh, your computer does not have a PHP server running on it. Uh, I am going to be using Windows 10 and uh, we're going to be starting basically from the ground up for how you can start hosting your own search engine on prem with uh, this PHP client. And so the very first thing to start with is installing Elasticsearch and this is a very straightforward process. I'm using Elasticsearch version 6. Elastic is constantly updating their versions so I do highly recommend downloading the latest version from their website before uh, continuing or you won't even be able to do this. Um, and once you've installed Elastic they do have very nice MSI installers for Windows that make the process significantly easier and I have a, another video on that. Um, you're going to run the Elasticsearch service and it's just a Windows service that runs in the background. What it's doing is creating something that uh, listens on port 9200 of your local host by default for pings and so once you've installed and started your Elastic service um, what you can do to confirm that it's running is by seeing if you can ping local host port 9200 and if you get a response back, it means that your service is running. So uh, with that confirmed, the next thing that we're going to be doing is making sure that uh, we have a PHP server installed on our computer. And for Windows, I'm going to be using MAMP. It's free. And um, basically what this does to give some background on PHP is PHP is a, a server side uh, scripting language. So unlike JavaScript, PHP is running on the web server, not on the client's browser. Um, and this perhaps has some security benefits, but um, for the sake of this video, because the Elasticsearch client that we're gonna be using is PHP based, we will need to be hosting a PHP server. In this case, I'm using MAMP. Um, and so if you're using Windows, installing MAMP is fairly straightforward. Um, just, you don't need MAMP Pro, you don't need any of the other stuff, just stick with the defaults. You can uncheck the boxes for pretty much everything else. The main thing you're gonna be doing here though is configuring under your preferences uh, when to start MAMP, and basically I just have it here for starting our servers when I've started MAMP, and you change your ports accordingly. In this case, PHP is gonna be, our, our PHP that we write is gonna be hosted on something on Apache, and so what I'm going to be saying is that we want to be listening on port 888 for pings. Uh, and so these are the ports that we need to configure appropriately to get this to work. And then under this PHP tab here is where we're going to specify what version of PHP we're using. Um, I think this is the default settings. And then the only other settings you're really going to be modifying here are going to be your document root. And this is where you save your directory that contains the PHP that you're going to be writing. So um, after you've installed MAMP, um, you will not have yet created a directory yet, and that's okay, um, because the next thing we're going to be doing is actually getting the Elasticsearch client installed onto your computer. And um, I know this is a lot of steps, and it, it took me a while to figure out, so um, hopefully follow this in order and you should be good. Um, your best friend in all of this is going to be the GitHub page for the Elasticsearch PHP client because this is where they uh, really tell you what you need to do in order to get this working correctly. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Composer, which is this uh, package manager that will install the Elasticsearch PHP client. Um, and to do that, what we would, the, re the, the way we do this is we first install Composer. Uh, and you can just do this by going on Google, looking up Composer for Windows, and um, downloading and installing it. After you've installed Composer, the next thing you'll be doing uh, is going, within Composer you need to tell it where you have your PHP server, um, and this was a step that I uh, almost messed up on, but uh, PHP, if you're using MAMP, is gonna be installed under C colon backslash MAMP, um, and so just make sure you get that. I'm sorry for not having a screenshot on that, but um, take my word for it. When you're installing Composer, it will ask you where you have installed PHP. 
So after you've specified that location, the next step that you will be doing uh, is actually writing and creating a new directory. So on my desktop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this ElasticSearchPHP. And so within this folder that I just created, um, we're going to need to uh, create a composer.json file. So if we copy this, and then you can use whatever notepad or uh, text editor you want. I'm gonna put in this code, and we're going to save this, and we're going to make sure that we save this under the file that we just created, which was called ElasticSearchPHP. And this one we're going to be calling it composer.json. That saves it as a JSON format. Once we've done this, we're going to open up our command prompt and we're going to change directory to where we have installed this. So if I go under the desktop and navigate to the folder where we have that Elasticsearch. Now what I do is I type in composer install and what this is going to do is it's going to check the directory that we just created for a composer.json document and it's going to recognize that we have this dependency for the Elasticsearch client. And what we can see that it's doing here in the background is actually installing the files. And so your empty directory, which once had the composer.json file in it, will now have additional files in it. So if we take a look at our desktop now, we're gonna note how there's now a vendor uh, directory here and also a composer.lock file. These are very important for actually using your Elasticsearch low-level PHP client. Okay, and now that we've done this, we can actually begin to use uh, Elasticsearch. And our best friend here again is going to be the um, Elasticsearch PHP client page on GitHub. And so going to this page, what we can see here is that um, after we've installed Composer. All of this stuff, by the way, is on here, so I highly recommend reading this documentation thoroughly before you start playing around with it because you wanna make sure you get all these settings right. Um, the very first thing we're gonna be doing is initializing and creating an Elasticsearch client within our PHP code. And if you're super brand new to PHP, uh, the way we can do this is also very straightforward. We go into our notepad, we can just paste in this PHP code that they have on Elasticsearch site, um, and then we end the PHP. We're gonna save this under the directory that we just created on our desktop or wherever you saved it, and call this index.php. And so what this is going to do is make it so that every time you start your PHP server, this is gonna be the code that gets hit. And in addition to that, I will just echo out a command saying that the Elasticsearch client has been created. And also a break, just it's a new line. We're gonna save this information and it's saved under our desktop directory with this index.php. And so now what you're gonna do is we're gonna open up MAMP, the our PHP server that we're hosting locally, and we're going to find our way to the uh, directory where we've just created this um, PHP code. We're gonna click OK. What this is going to do is going to look for index.php. When I click OK, um, you're gonna note here how we're using the Apache server, so we just have to wait until this dot turns green. That means our server is now live, um, and uh, just so we're all clear, if we view our preferences again, these are the preferences I have. We're listening on port 888 for Apache, which is the main one. Uh, our PHP, we didn't change any settings here. The only other thing we've really modified within the preferences for our, our PHP server is the document root. And I've just pointed this to the directory that we created a few minutes ago. And now, um, if I open up a new tab in Chrome, What we get here, if we go to localhost port 8888, 
we can see that an Elasticsearch client has been created successfully. Uh, PHP, as a side note, is a very uh, somewhat difficult language to t program in because when you get errors, um, the page just won't render. So if you uh, make errors here, like if I typed in this and then I saved this PHP and then I re-ran this web page, it's just going to error out. So uh, debugging your PHP code can get a little bit tricky. So just make sure you do a good job with following what is on the Elasticsearch documentation page. Um, and now what we can also begin to do is play more with the uh, stuff that Elastic has on their site. So if we look up the GitHub page here, what we've just done is actually created an Elasticsearch. We've installed the Elasticsearch PHP client. Um, we have just created the Elasticsearch client within our PHP. And what we're going to do now is actually uh, create a JSON document within our Elasticsearch service that is running. So if we go back here, what we can do is uh, create this PHP client. The way that the PHP client works is within PHP, we are creating indexes, we are creating arrays, and we have subarrays within our arrays. So like body here uh, contains this subarray. And what you're doing is you're, so params is an array and we're passing it into our client that was just created above. And because PHP is object oriented, um, you can get really fancy with this stuff, but I'm gonna keep this a high level, simple introduction. So we're gonna be writing procedural PHP. Um, but in this case, what we're doing is we are storing information into our PHP, into our Elasticsearch service that was just created. So Elastic is going to index this thing. And what we've done here is we've created a new document. Uh, the ID of this document is my ID and it's gonna contain some values A, B, C in a test field. And we're gonna be passing this parameter, this array into our client and we're telling it to index this thing. So if I save this PHP code and then we go back to Chrome and we go to localhost port 8888, what this is going to do is going to first create our Elasticsearch client and then it's going to save an array or it's going to save this uh, document into the Elasticsearch index that we have running on our computer that we started in the very beginning. Now, if you don't have your Elasticsearch service running, um, this will cause issues. So just make sure your Elasticsearch service is running and you'll be able to keep going. Um, and then the next thing we can do here, just following the documentation, is uh, actually query our Elasticsearch service. So if we copy this PHP code, we go back here. Um, what I just did in lines 11 through 18 is store a document in our Elasticsearch index. Now what we're going to be doing is getting this document and printing out the response. So if I save this code and then we go back to our web page here and we rerun it, we can see that we get back a document with the uh, field ABC as its value or the value is ABC. And so um, if you've made it this far, congratulations, you now have created a PHP Elasticsearch client. And um, I do strongly encourage you to start looking more into the uh, functions you can start writing. You can add in text boxes to start uh, generating query strings. So you would have, I can do this in future videos also, but you can uh, start getting a lot more creative. This is just to help get you started with the Elasticsearch PHP client. And again, Elasticsearch is updating so often and the Elasticsearch PHP client is updating so often that I can't strongly recommend enough that you view the documentation, use this video as a supplement, and um, see if you can get it working. Um, it is tough. It will take a little bit, but right now at this moment, uh, if, you, if you follow these directions, it should work correctly. Uh, and I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.